Hello and welcome to my YouTube video on how to make active reading a uh, fun part of your Kaplan SAT or ACT class. My name is Rory Hatfield. I'm a full-time Lab Online faculty member uh, for Kaplan and I am part of the Energy Task Force helping uh, teachers uh, you know, introduce energy and enthusiasm and getting um, their students motivated within the class. Even though I'll be showing you tips for how to make active reading more palatable and certainly more fun in any classroom. Um, I will be showing you the tools just specific to um, my live online classroom. So I'll be highlighting stuff, um, I'll be typing a notepad on the screen, um, this, but please if you're an on-site classroom viewing this by all means adapt what I'm doing to your class. Now while it's useful to lead students through active reading by modeling the questions for them and eliciting responses, Making a truly engaging class and a really motivated student uh, base comes from uh, giving them clear, concrete tasks when active reading so that students can repeat them during the homework and on the practice test so by the time test day rolls around, they know active reading down solid. It doesn't take a huge um, adjustment of what, of what to do. In fact, a lot of these uh, tips actually came from um, my, you know, my peers here at Kaplan. So, um, my my conversations with Colin Grunwald, Laura Atchison, uh, Jay Kirby, and yes, even uh, Kaplan Vice President of Live Online Academics and noted Je Jeopardy Tournament of Champions winner Bob Verini have contributed my ideas here. So, thank you all very much. I'm about to model as a teacher how I would go about instructing students through this third paragraph from the first ACT passage they see about Sandley Findlay and the really awful movie, Why Me? Alright class, I'm about to read that first sentence and you tell me at the end if you think it's the topic sentence giving away the idea of the paragraph or it's just filler. Let's go. Of course, even this might have become moving with some kind of convincing acting by Findlay or Jackson. All right. Well, that is the first sentence. Is that the topic? All right. Well, we see Michelle and Peter certainly agree, and David saying, "Yeah, that acting's really bad." See, we got it right away um, because topic sentences are often uh, in the first part of a paragraph, so we have bad acting. I'm gonna read the next sentence. You tell me how it connects to the first sentence. Are they related? Are they? Do they support? Contrast one another? Is it just new information? I'll read, and you decide. Though some have charged that Findlay coasts on her reputation from her glory days, I usually find that she does much with whatever she is given. Okay. Now let me know. How do those two sentences relate? Are they related? Ah. Okay. Yeah. David, you're right. It's like the author likes Findlay, just not in this movie. Uh, we see that. Uh, Paige and Zoe agree. Excellent. All right, so we're going to type in bad acting in our passage map, but author usually likes Findlay. Great. Consider if this next sentence is also uh, is anything new. So remember, if we need to write down information from this sentence, you let me know after I've done reading it. Unfortunately, it appears here as if she and Jackson have never even met before, making the concept of them as mother and daughter implausible at best. Okay, any new information here? Remember, so far we have bad acting, but author usually likes Findlay. Okay, uh, a lot of you are saying, no! Um, I know, John, you said, well, she doesn't like, doesn't like them here. Uh, Findlay doesn't like Findlay in this. Uh, movie, we can just add that. We usually like Findlay, just not in this movie. Keep it as brief as possible. Okay, now I'm going to read the next two sentences, and you tell me if it's new information that we haven't written down yet. If it is, we'll briefly note in our passage map. If not, we'll skim them as a detail supporting the main idea, but not write it down, and just move on to the next paragraph. Director Sarah Conley certainly doesn't help matters. Heavy-handedly cueing the viewer with music that is either melodramatic or dirge-like. I guess she figures we won't know when to grab the tissue otherwise. Is that new information? Remember, 
So far we've given bad acting, and the author typically likes Findlay. Exactly. Even though the um, the movie is certainly bad, uh, David, you're right. The, we, had, we, need to, we need to mark now how the directing is bad. So we got that, bad directing. We're going to type it and move along. Okay, I'm going to step back from my uh, teacher performance role and always always give students a heads up as to what you want them to do because even when you're not there and they're practicing, hearing you give questions throughout a paragraph lets them know that's the model for how to attack passages. So they're not just reading passages like, oh wow, wow, this movie kind of stinks, man. They're actually like asking, oh, what's the author thinking? Is this the main idea? Is this detail relevant to the main idea? They're always focusing and actively reading, asking themselves questions about the main ideas of the passage, main ideas of the paragraph, the author's opinion. That's exactly what they'll need to do uh, as if it's second nature on test day. Because let me tell you, when they're sitting there um, in the test, they're not going to have time to be like, I will apply the Kepler method to this question. Hmm. Step one. What is the question? Excellent. I what, remember I did this last week. Ah, uh, the question is this. They... I, I, okay, they're probably not going to say that, because that voice, you know, it's like me in 30 years still wearing the bow tie. That's that's what that sounds like. That's not going to be them. You will also see that uh, you're going to have classes that, you know, are kind of new to this, and you'll have to lead them along, which is great, but you'll have other classes that are just picking up active reading like it's second nature, and that's awesome. To supplement that, um, have them look out for key words as well, like, for example, before reading the second sentence, say, hey, um, point out, look for the word that describes the relationship between the first and second sentences. And a lot of students will say, oh, it must be though, because it's like it's showing contrast. And be like, great, what are some other contrast keywords? That way, even if students didn't pick up on that, they should know a word that just means contrast. But despite, however, and that allows them to not only be more engaged in something and learn a concept they weren't familiar with, but it also gives them an opportunity to to uh, contribute positively to the class. And you always want to give students as many opportunities as they can to to do something and contribute. And let's say you have a, a class that's struggling, you can say, great, well, in the next two sentences, I want you to look for like the words that tell you the author's opinion. I mean, we already know that, you know, the author probably doesn't like the movie. What words tell you she doesn't like she might not like the acting and that will get them to find unfortunately um, the concept is implausible heavy handedly cueing the viewer with melodramatic or dirge like uh, <laughs> music or big one here I guess she figures we won't know when to grab the tissue otherwise not exactly a ringing endorsement and lastly let's say they don't know what uh, dirge like is not a problem. They're not going to have to know every word on the test to understand it. Encourage them to read through context. Be like, oh, I don't know what dirge like is, but I know what melodramatic is, and I know she's heavy handedly cueing the viewer, and I'm guessing it's something negative, but even if they don't find what melodramatic and dirge like means, they don't know, that's cool. Just have them read, continue reading around. Oh, well, I don't know what dirge like means, but. The author says the director thinks we won't know when they grab the tissue otherwise, so she must think that we're, she must make it really painfully obvious that the movie's sad. And that's what I have for y'all. Alright, uh, thank you very much for uh, being with he me here today to learn about the critical reading section. If you have any other questions or would like to brainstorm my ide some ideas with me, have at it. Shoot me an email at roy.hatfield.com. Have a great day and have good teaching.